While at first glance it might seem like any differences between the male and female characters in Dark Souls are purely visual, you might be surprised at just how many things work differently based on the chosen character. The basis behind these disparities is a potential oversight the developers at From Software made when programming female exclusive animations. Let's take a look at its male counterpart first, as their animations are first on the list and cover 99% of the player character's behavior. A00 is the male idol animation, and the DS Animation Studio reveals it's made up of the animation visual itself, a sound effect spawner, an animation blender, and several cancellation conditions labeled as end if action X is queued. Action X includes queuing up left or right handed attacks, queuing up switching weapons, or queuing a consumable use. If we on the other hand explore the female idol animation labeled A200, I'm sure you can spot the difference. Indeed, all of the cancel conditions present in the male animation are completely absent in the female version. We could speculate as to why this is the case, but I suspect that with the distinct female animations being labeled with the highest index, they were last additions to the animation set. It would make sense to first create all the shared animations and only then add the distinct ones. Why the cancel conditions are missing however, I'm not sure. It was either an oversight or they used a different system of cancelling animations by that point of development. There are also other minor variances like a different number of blending frames between the respective jogging animations. Whatever the reason for these changes may be, it creates several interesting scenarios where the male and female characters operate diversely and which we will now explore in further detail. Strap yourselves in as this is about to get technical. First off is a small discrepancy in acceleration between the two characters. When transitioning between standstill and jogging, and also jogging and sprinting, or dashing as the game calls it, there is a brief period of time where the character's speed gradually adjusts, instead of the transition playing out instantaneously. Testing done by the glitch hunter Androv T utilizing special tools to attain maximum input consistency revealed that these transition periods differ in speed between the two characters. The transition is faster for the female character as opposed to the male character. The true reason for this is unfortunately unknown as it is most likely hidden within the ESD, the game's state machine, in this particular case handling the entire character and what it may do at any point. Probing the ESD is a strenuous process and something we just don't know much about yet. That being said, thanks to Androv, we do know that the speed difference is present for both acceleration and deceleration, meaning although the female character reaches top speed faster, it also reaches the lower speed faster while decelerating, resulting in roughly even speed overall between the two characters, assuming equal amounts of transitions. In a speedrun, however, very rarely will a running sequence end with a simple deceleration to jogging or standstill. Instead, the character will transition into opening doors, lighting a bonfire, entering a fog gate or other similar action where the last deceleration isn't present, giving the female character a slight edge, as over the course of an entire speedrun, such events occur many times. This should mean that playing as a female should generally be faster and especially the speedrunners should be selecting it every time, right? Well, not really. It wouldn't be Dark Souls if things didn't get a little more complicated. Androv's testing further revealed that performing an upper body animation during the transition between two speed levels completely skips that transition. Again, the true reason for this is unknown as it is most likely some combination of animation blending and ESD operations. Upper body animations include weapon switching with a d-pad, even with no weapons equipped. This is commonly called toggling within the community. Blocking, swapping between arrow types with a bow equipped, that's the L2 action when handling a bow. Again, just like with toggling, no arrows need to be equipped. And finally, switching between one-handing and two-handing. Of course, these upper body animations only save time when transitioning to a higher speed, as skipping deceleration is undesirable since it allows for the higher speed to be maintained for a little longer. This trick works for both the male and female characters, making their acceleration equally quick. If utilizing upper body animations while starting to move faster, but not while slowing down, the female character is the one being disadvantaged, as it still keeps its faster deceleration. 
They should answer the common questions of why speedrunners constantly swap their weapons around when running around Lordran, and why the top speedruns opt to use the male character. Additionally, regenerating stamina is done in the smallest chunks possible in order to provide more opportunities for time save with the upper body animation speed up. Please note that these time saves are marginal, but I estimate that over the course of an all boss's speedrun lasting about 62 minutes, roughly 2 to 3 seconds might be saved with the male character and good toggling. That doesn't seem like much, but I have personally been a witness to speedrun races where one second was enough to decide between the winner and the loser. Master is the winner! What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? If you are interested in the exact numbers from Androv's test and how exactly the speed changes if an upper body animation cancel is performed, I have linked his insane scientific paper in the description below. Besides the direct speed difference, there are also other significant instances of the animation disparity substantially contributing towards selecting one or the other character. Instances which might play a bigger role than saving a couple of frames throughout a speedrun. Confirmation box duping is a well-known and highly utilized exploit, especially in the original version of the game. It allows for consumables such as boss souls or homeward bones to be used without being depleted. Simply put, it is achieved by queuing up using a consumable with a confirmation box, such as the Soul of Sif, while fixed in an action, such as a roll, and then opening the menu which delays the appearance of the confirmation box, followed by using a different consumable from the inventory. Upon confirming the box, the newly selected consumable is depleted, here costing us one Estus Flask charge, while attaining the properties of the stored consumable, resulting in obtaining 16,000 souls without losing the Soul of Sif. If executed properly, this works every time as a male, but because we are transitioning from a specific action, in our case rolling, to being idle, as we now know an animation the female character has an exclusive version of, the female character runs into issues, and instead of the confirmation box showing up when Estus is selected, the Estus flask is drunk from normally. So what exactly is at play here, and is there a way to fix it? The difference between the two characters is not whether an action can be queued, but rather when it can come out. Let me explain. If we roll and stop moving, we are transitioning from the rolling animation to the idle animation. When an action is queued during the roll, it will play out between the end of the rolling animation and the start of the idle animation. Hence why regular action queuing works without issues for both characters. As you can see, the confirmation box for using the soul of Sif appears in either case. Delaying the confirmation box pop-up by opening the start menu, however, prevents it from playing out between the two animations, and while the character enters idle, using the soul stays stored in the game's memory. Closing the start menu should let the stored action manifest, and the confirmation box should show up. This is indeed the case for the male character. The idle animation is briefly cancelled by the stored action, the box shows up, and then the idle animation immediately resumes. As I have already explained, the female idle animation doesn't include the necessary cancel conditions, and that's why after closing the menu, the confirmation box never shows. The queued action cannot manifest, because female idling cannot be interrupted. However, using the soul of Sif still remains stored in the memory. We can showcase it by simply blocking. Blocking doesn't disrupt the action queue and shares the same cancel conditions with the male idle animation. As soon as we block, the confirmation box shows up. When trying to dupe, the confirmation box simply cannot interrupt the idle animation, while drinking the Estus is a completely new action playing out as intended. The issue is clear then. As long as the animation following the queued input cannot be cancelled, the confirmation box dupe won't work. So getting rid of the female idle animation would solve this problem. But how? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. When two-handing any item, a different idle animation shared between both the characters is utilized. This animation uses the male cancel conditions and thus can be interrupted with a queued action. The same is also true when wielding one of the following weapon types in the right hand. Great swords, great axes, great hammers, spears or halberds. While these relatively basic ways of circumventing the female disadvantage exist, there might be scenarios where duping off a parry might be beneficial, and without the listed weapons equipped in the right hand, the female character would simply have to resort to a different strategy. Both toggling and confirmation box duping put females at a disadvantage. 
but for some, this next difference is enough to sway the odds in the opposite direction. And in terms of swaying the odds of privacy on the internet in your direction, let me thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Now there are tons of reasons why you might want to use a VPN at home, like ensuring no one is spying on you, keeping your payment information secure, or accessing geographically limited content. But for me, the real game changer is the ability to use NordVPN on six different devices. With speedrunning marathons finally returning back to on-site settings, I will be traveling a lot more than in the past two years, meaning I will also often connect to public Wi-Fi's on my laptop or phone, whether at the event venue, the hotel, or at an airport. Using NordVPN allows me to stay safe on these networks, ensuring no one executes any remote code on my device, unlike if you were playing Dark Souls online at this time. Please fix the servers already from soft. Way too many people are annoyed. But that's probably because Elden Ring is so close. Anyways, NordVPN are celebrating their 10th birthday and have got an exclusive 2-year deal for chat souls and jurors such as yourself. Do both of us a favor and go to nordvpn.com slash catalystz if you wish to claim this limited time offer. Oh yeah, if you're unhappy with the service, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked. It's as good as prom swapping at the Undead Merchant, except the Anolondo Fraud Department won't try to arrest you. nordvpn.com slash catalystz. The link is in the description. Another practical example of male-female differences playing out is an exploit called Still Moose Swap. What we just covered about action queuing is also key for understanding this instance. Moose Swap is a glitch where the action to two-hand a bow in one's left hand is queued up and before the game executes it, the bow is swapped out for a weapon of choice. This swap doesn't interrupt the action queue and as such, the newly equipped weapon will be two-handed instead. In the first Dark Souls, the only weapon one can two-hand in the left hand is the bow, and the bow does not have any information for rolling, plunging or running attacks. It can only shoot an arrow, so when a different weapon is forced to be two-handed in the left hand slot through move swap, the game fetches the data for these attacks from the right hand. This is generally abused to use a heavy hitting but slow weapon and give it the running attack of a thrusting weapon, which is not only quick but hits in two ticks, essentially providing double the damage. Muswap is normally done out of a jump roll, but for beginners, this method can be quite difficult to learn at first and can present a pretty big entry barrier into the Prepare to Die Edition speedruns. Fortunately, another technique much more welcoming to the newcomers was discovered. Pressing L1 while two-handing can result in two outcomes. Either blocking with a two-handed weapon or aiming down sights with a bow. In both cases, the L1 input is kept in the game's memory. The exact reason for this is unknown, but once again it's most likely the ESD state machine which doesn't handle blocking or aiming as a fully fledged animation and thus doesn't remove it from the action queue properly. This can be proven after getting rid of the two-handed state. Simply using the keybind wouldn't work as that would clear the stored L1 input from the action queue. Instead, we need to use a little workaround by unequipping a weapon in the equipment tab. Now, the male character proceeds to punch immediately, as the stored L1 input can interrupt the male idle animation. As a female, repeating the same process doesn't actually make the character punch. This is because yet again we are in the one-handed female idle animation A200 and it cannot be interrupted by the stored L1 input. It can nevertheless still be triggered even as a female and that is by entering a different cancelable animation which doesn't clear the L1 input from the action queue. One animation meets these conditions, and that is the turnaround. The turnaround has the regular cancel properties, and thus the L1 input will follow through, demonstrated by the punch being executed. If you've been following closely, you might wonder whether the turnaround could also be used to let a confirmation box play out and make confirmation box duping work better. That is indeed a great question, but the stored confirmation box seems to get cleared by a turnaround, while an L1 input doesn't. More ESD magic. Okay, but how is this connected to move swapping? Unequipping a weapon isn't the only action reverting a two-handed state. Equipping or swapping a weapon achieves the same outcome. It is thus possible to store an L1 input while one-handing the bow, which would, if triggered by turning around, proceed to two-hand it. During the turnaround process, however, swapping out the bow for a different weapon is possible and with proper timing, a move swap is executed. Let's demonstrate the entire procedure. First, we store the L1 input by blocking. Then, equipping the bow makes our character unblock. A turnaround animation will trigger the stored input, so as we turn around, we also swap the bow for our weapon of choice. 
This process is fundamentally identical to a regular move swap, but since the stored input is executed at will, the player can navigate the menus comfortably without any rush. Because this method of move swapping is performed while standing still, it was conveniently named Still Move Swap. This is true as a female, but for once the male's idle animation means trouble. Since male idling can be interrupted, the stored L1 is executed immediately after the bow is unequipped, two-handing without an opportunity to swap out the bow for the desired weapon. Instead, the execution of the stored input needs to be delayed, which can be done by constantly staying on the move. As long as we are moving, the running animation takes priority and the stored L1 input won't play out. When ready to swap the weapon, we need to stop and time equipping the weapon, as going back into idle will make the L1 execute. When done correctly, we are also move swapped, just like the female counterpart. But the inconvenience is quite obvious. The character needs to be in motion the entire time menuing is being performed, which can be tricky in areas where running up against a wall or into a corner isn't feasible. Furthermore, timing the weapon swap is much easier if also inputting the turnaround, instead of just stopping the movement. If you ever see speedrunners exploiting the still move swap, you can bet they will be doing it with the female character, despite other drawbacks it might present. That's how convenient the female still move swap is. After breaking the pattern, we are going right back to Miyazaki discriminating women. Onward run warping is a groundbreaking glitch allowing for regular warp locations to be manipulated and swapped for another. I have a full video covering it in detail and will link it in the description for those interested about the specifics. In order to trigger this style of wrong warp, a different glitch called Spell Swap is utilized. Spell swapping basically casts one spell with the effect of another spell. This is useful for bypassing the requirements a spell might have, such as wielding the appropriate spellcasting tool. It also means the animation of the original spell is used, and this is where the magic lies. The homeward spell sends the player to a place of their last bonfire. Homeward's animation is long enough to keep the player occupied all the way until the warp is performed. Spell swapping Homeward's effect on a spell with a shorter animation such as Fireball, however gives the player an opportunity to move around for a couple of frames before the warp executes. This freedom can then be used to rest at a different bonfire than the player is being warped to, which in return triggers a wrong warp. Spell swapping only works if the animation the player is currently in has the proper cancelable properties. This means it cannot be done moving and needs to be performed while idle. And you already see where the issue is. As we now know, the female idle animation cannot be properly cancelled, and because spell swap requires two spellcasting tools to be equipped, simply two-handing like in the case of confirmation box duping is not possible. Female thus has a hard time finding a substitute. Our trusty turnaround animation does not work either. Luckily, there is a suitable alternative in the failed spellcast animation, or the head scratch as we might call it. This animation can be cancelled and spell swap thus works out of it properly. This nuisance caused by From Software coding presents not only a slightly more difficult version of Homeward Wrong Warping, but also introduces a time loss, as the failed cast animation needs to play out first. It might not seem like a big deal, but in shorter categories such as any percent, this time difference can play a pivotal role between achieving a record or not. Hey, sub 20! Shit! <laughs> So, these are the major differences between the two playable character models. Common questions about differing hitboxes or anything similarly obvious can now be swept under the table, but it wouldn't be from software if there was a more detail than might seem at first. Late addition of female exclusive animations in the development cycle caused them to use different cancelling functions, resulting in several substantial inequalities. The speed of movement, confirmation box duping and spell swapping all present a disadvantage for the female character. However, the ability to still move swap can be such a deal breaker for some players that they might opt to use it anyway. One small difference between animations resulting in complex interactions is something that shouldn't even be surprising at this point, as time and time again we are reminded of the depth this fantastic game carries. Depth, which makes it such a fun speedrun to play and to watch. I hope that thanks to this video, next time you watch your favorite Dark Souls speedrunner, you might have an idea of why they start as a male or a female. 
If you found the info presented interesting in any way, consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. It takes about 2 seconds, really helps me out and also lets me know that you enjoy this sort of stuff. Until next time, thank you for watching and have a great day.